All right, so this is going to be a quick one. I, I, I've been reading this book for about on and off for about a month now. I've got several books I'm into. Like and when I do get to read, I'm trying to finish the Apocrypha. I'm trying to still finish the complete Bible. I'm trying to finish uh, the Book of Mormon. I've started in. Uh, I, I have uh, the Kings and Queens, uh, uh, Kings and Black Kings and Kings, Queens, Black and Negro rulers of Scotland and the British Isles. Let me correct myself. What am I saying there? But uh, I'm reading a book right now called The Great and Abominable Church of Satan. And it was recommended by uh, several Hebrew YouTubers, but most and most significantly, the person that did the most bringing out of this was Big Judah. But I just want to read some stuff from it that just plays so much into the, a lot of the truths I've been learning and researching into lately and things that may help others and just spark a spark a sense of curiosity and passion for the truth. Go figure out something on your own. Or maybe I'm going to answer some questions that you've thought in the back of your head or some things that you've thought about that we're both thinking about that we can both come together in here and you can see what I'm kind of was kind of going through my head. But the this book is called The Great and Abominable Church of the Devil by H. Verlin Anderson. And it's conjoined with the Book of Mormon. So both of these books go together. And the Mormons are using this book as in terms as if they are the children of the Bible or if they are God's children. And we know that's not true. We know that the Mormon, the Book of Mormon is just... If I'm correct, the Southern Kingdom's records renamed, rebranded, and pushed off as another people's religion, which has happened with the Bible entirely, pretty much. A lot of religions that people have today are actually in or of the Bible, but just whitewashed or the race swapped to the race of the whoever took over that area, whoever took the books of the people that ruled there and just switched the records around to implicate that they were the ones that were in these books or they were the ones going through these historic events when it's not true they are actually invaders many of these people but that's another topic for another video so this book is connected with the book of mormon and like i said these it's going into context of especially the book of uh tobit yes the book of tobit if i can hold on let me just use some references here uh if i can yeah if i can remember the book of no, no, it's Nephi. It's first and second Nephi. Uh, uh, first and second Nephi. And when I read these in the Book of Mormon, it is incredible. The Book of Nephi talks about that Most High allowing these people a, the, a land, like Nephi taking these people in a ship, uh, a ship that the Most High told them how to build. Now, this wasn't the ark, so I find it interesting that the Most High is giving certain people directions on how to build certain things. Just like on the left-hand path, you hear these... Uh, cave beasts talk about how they get instructions from aliens and demons and spirits how other people and other biblical figures like old Nephi here got instructions on how to build compasses and boats on how to get to the land that the Most High has set aside for him in his generations and the generations after that and the generations after that and after that and the contract that was told that needed to be kept the contract that needed to be kept in order for the other heathen, the other Gentile nations not to be able to access these lands. So right now we can go into uh, different directions with this book because like I said, it's just connected with the Book of Mormon. So I can go in there and I can just start reading through uh, Nephi where it talks about the promises and the 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 deals made with the most high and the lands that these guys got which were the americas the americas were the lands that nephi uh, inherited but i just want to start off with this with the book the need to identify the devil's church now this is from the great and abominable church of the devil that i was talking to you about before that i'm reading and this is a uh, page five and it's just it just states some some of the most obvious things and sometimes we have to do that we have to go through books written by the gentiles and by heathens because they were the ones that were taking our knowledge they're the ones that are kept that have kept our knowledge so we have to get our knowledge back through books that the most high use these people to write and this is one of those books i believe so this is in page five uh it's the second paragraph or second or second um yeah second paragraph the need to identify the devil's church in spite of such 
predictions of a culminating conflict between the forces of good and evil, relatively few of those who consider themselves members of Christ's church, which is the Christian church, the Catholic church, the Mormon church, the Southern Baptist churches, these are all Constantine Christianity, Caucasian Christianity, white Jesus, replacement theology, Christianity, Christians and Catholics replace the original Hebrews of the Bible. That's what they believe. That's what they practice. Let me get back. The members of Christ's church seem to concern themselves about the identity of the opposition. Such apathy may prove disastrous because in order to prepare for battle, it is, it is essential to identify the enemy, especially if he is combined and organized the Lord uh, combined and organized. The Lord has instructed us to contend against no church, save it be the church of the devil. So there's two churches. There's a priest. There's a church of the devil. There's a church of uh, Satan. There's a church of uh, Cain. There's a priest of Cain, the priest of Mahan that worked there. And um, there's the church of the Most High. There's only two churches. And the church of the devil has two number one rules. His first rule is nobody talks about the church of the devil. The devil is not supposed to exist. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was to convince the world he doesn't exist. How can you protect yourself against something that technically doesn't exist to a large portion of the world? Right? So that's rule number one. The second is they imitate. They cannot create anything. These creatures that are bound to this existence, that are bound to this earth, that the most high damn down here and saying, your, your punishment is to be stuck down here and you have to live in a war the earth and you have to watch all your demonic little false creations that you've tried to attempt to usurp me and create man like I did. You tried to come down here. Well, after I kicked you down here and you tried to do the same thing and it didn't go that well. And now you're going to be stuck down here. You're going to be enslaved down here in certain mountain ranges, under certain areas, in certain pits located in this realm. There's something very special about this earth realm where it's a prison for spiritual entities. And that could be on many other places, can be a prison for spiritual entities. We know about the hexagon on Saturn. What that is known for, are, these are different houses for deities. But uh, let's keep on going with what it says. Uh, there's two different rules. Like, how can these Christians call out the devil and truly identify the devil if they themselves portray attributes of the devil or of the wicked seed or of the serpent seed line or of the sons of perdition that the scriptures talk about or of those who are trying to usurp the power of the most high the psalms 83 confederation okay so let's keep on going there is much spiritual evidence that may that many of them will be deceived into joining Satan's organization. Absolutely. If you are in a Christian church right now, you are in a satanic organization. You are following Egyptology. That's Christianity is just Egyptianity. It's just Egyptian worship. It's a God that was taken away in a book that was taken away from his original people so they could not find their way back to their God because they're, when they worship the God of the scriptures, that's when power starts coming out. That's when shit starts to happen around the world. But when these people are confused, when these people have been brought down by their God, you guys, t while they were down in, in their 400 years of servitude and slavery, you guys went through their personal belongings. You guys went through their history. You guys went through their books. You guys went through their clothings. You guys went through their temples. You guys went through their grave sites. You guys went through their sin, everything. And you took it and you rebranded it and you threw it to your buddies. Like, here, try this on. Look at this book. Rip those pages out. Repaint those faces and say that's our book. It says a lot of good, powerful information. We can't let the rest of the world know that these people made this. We have to be the ones that are experts on this. So rename it and it's ours. Let's keep on going. There is much spiritual evidence that many of them will be deceived into joining Satan's organization, thus accepting his plan to destroy free agency. Such could hardly occur if people understood that organization and that plan. But the Christian church doesn't look into who the devil is. They tell you that it's a red, funny enough, they tell you it's a red being with a tail and a pitchfork and long horns and it pokes you and gives you the common cold. It pokes you and... You're flat, you got a flat tire and you can't make it, you're late to work that day and you get yelled at by your boss. That's what the Christian church wants you to think the devil is. The devil is a group of people. 
the devil works through a group of people. The devil is represented by a spirit spiritually and physically through a nation of people. Which nation of people represents the devil? Which nation of people works for the devil? Which nation of people claims that they're blessed by God that has inherited the whole world and knowledge because God has blessed them, but they control and they have the attributes and their characteristics and their history shows us that they're nothing but devils. Let's keep it going. Even though he saw the rise of that organization before the Gentiles came upon the promised land. Now, this is Nephi he's talking about. Before Nephi ceased recording what he saw, he made known some interesting facts about the great and abominable church. Even though he saw the rise of that organization before the Gentiles came upon the promised land, because they broke the commandment, they broke the law, statutes, and commandments that Mosai gave to them. Remember in the book of Nephi what he promised what Nephi promised, the, the Most High makes contracts with everything and everybody. And if you don't follow those contracts, he lets you immediately start suffering the consequences. And then later, if you're lucky, he'll visit you and you're suffering and be like, Hey, hey, buddy, remember? You didn't obey me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. There's no such thing as a contract where I get the bad end of the deal because I am everything. I am. You, so what, what, what were you thinking? And Nephi, it wasn't necessarily Nephi that messed up, it was his descendants. And we we're going to get into the groups in the ten tribes over here in the Americas. Or the Israelites, I guess you can consider them the Israelites because Judah, Judah is, um, that's an, I got it written down somewhere. But let's keep on reading. I don't want to make this too long. We're already at 11 minutes. But, um. Before Nephi, ceased, before Nephi ceased recording what he saw, he made known some interesting facts about the great and abominable church. Even though he saw the rise of that organization before the Gentiles came upon the promised land, it was not until after the Americas were settled by them and the Book of Mormon came forth. Came forth? What the fuck you mean it came forth? You just stole the knowledge and rebranded it. This is the Israelites. This is Hebrew teachings this is hebrew records that you guys just took said okay we'll split up we'll call one of these books the bible we'll take this part of the bible we'll rip it up and we'll give it to this section of white people this section of gentiles and they'll use it as theirs they'll say it's theirs and they'll call it whatever book they want and they'll say it's theirs and they can get lots of money from the churches that they use to make out of this records from the hebrews that they be stolen and now labeled a different book okay so let's get back let's just dodge the hijack there it was not until after the Book of Mormon came forth that it assumed such terrifying proportions and corruptions uh, and corrupts the entire earth with this awful wickedness. Can we think of some people and some organizations that do wickedness worldwide? It, it, it's so I love it how so uh, these people out here, these Gentiles, will be like, "Oh, we're all evil. We all messed up. We all sin. We all commit genocide. We're all this. We're all that." No, we're not. But there's an asserted attempt to make other nations who are not naturally like this do as unto you. To see no big deal in killing, no big deal in slaughtering, no big deal in eating pork, no big deal in switching God's holy days, uh, the most highest holy day. Forgive me, I'm trying to get the word God out of my uh, vocabulary. Uh, the most highest holy days. Uh, the most high says that is the new year is in April and spring when everything comes to life. You guys say it's in the dead of winter. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. December 25th. We know that's not the God, the, Jesus' birthday, but we're going to celebrate it anyway. You know, we, we, we know the Hebrews and the Israelites are the real people of the book and that the Most High never forgot them and will never forget them. And when he comes back, he'll be coming to save them and them only. But you... Well, we don't like them. We don't like the color of their skin. We don't like the fact that those books say that. The Most High should be coming back for everyone, don't you think? Especially us. So let's just switch that around and let's just change that to a nice, uh, to a nice us. Yeah. Whoa. Sorry there. Got a little thirsty. Need to drink some all natural Florida spring water. All right, let's keep on going. Okay, note from the following quotation that this is a monstrous evil is destined to hold dominion in every nation in the world. Can you name a, Can you think of a nation that posts up in every country of the world? 
when you're over there and all of a sudden you see a flag of somebody or you know they have a military base somewhere in that country. Let's keep on going. All right. And it came to pass. This is in the book of Nephi. This is 1 Nephi 14, 9, and 11. I have the book of Mormon right in front of me. But like I said, uh, there's so many things I would get distracted by if I went into the book of Nephi. I have so many notes on this thing. This Just opening it up right now, I'm looking at it. I'm seeing a bunch of freaking writing all of, all along the sides of Nephi. So we're going to go down here. We're just going to get to the topic that I wanted to get into. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Nephi, look and behold, the great and abominable church, which is the mother of abominations, whose foundation is the devil. And he said unto me, behold, there save two churches only. The one church is the church of the Lamb of God, of Yahweh, and the other church is the church of the devil. Wherefore, whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb and God, belongeth to the great church, which is the mother of all abominations, and she is the whore of all the earth. The book of Revelation talks about who? The great whore. And how all the nations will come together to destroy the great whore, which is Babylon, because they got drunk off of her wine. They got a spiritual STD from this whore. Oh, she was beautiful, and she was everybody's girl. And believe it or not, all these other nations didn't mind sharing her. And the next thing you know, they're looking around, and they're seeing like all their women are dressed like this horror Babylon. All their men act like the horror Babylon. Every aspect of their society imitates and has been taken over by the horror of Babylon. Now let's keep on going with this verse. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the whore of all the earth and she sat upon many waters meaning her influence was all worldwide her influence was in countries that it shouldn't have been in countries where you have people that live very strict and uh dedicated religious lifestyles and full of philosophical lifestyles and they're 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 woke they're a woke nation my friend we're woke over here but What's that smell? You smell like a whore, bro. Has the Have you been sleeping with Babylon? Has Babylon been over here? You got in, Oh, you're you're in bed with Babylon. You're making secret deals with Babylon. You're not even the true people of this nation. You just invaded this place and then picked up the remnants of the stuff you found and put it on yourself and now you're calling yourselves the people of this nation? <gasps> That's what Babylon does. That's what Babylon encourages. And she sat upon many waters, and she had dominion over all the earth, among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people. Now, hold on. Let's get this for the end, because we're almost at seven, we're past 17 minutes now. Okay? So, Revelation 6 and 8. And I looked, therefore before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, death, and with the beast of the earth. Underneath that verse, I have dogs of conquest. Look up. So who were these people that came over to the land and that Nephi was promised and his generations after him were promised and under conditionals, under a contract? Who are these people that the Most High allowed to come over here and destroy us? Who are these people that brought the wicked church with them that came over and destroyed the land that Nephi was promised I don't know just foods for thought this is just something I've been going through quick I got a lot of videos I've been just really it's been weighing on me to wait and make lately and I've been receiving a lot of the knowledge that I've been asking for and it's I, I want to say a shout out to all you Israelite teachers out there everyone that's in this knowledge that's doing videos thank you we you have people watching you you're changing lives and you don't even know it but you do know it so with that being said thank you uh if this interests you i'm going to probably drop something else including uh that's dealing with this book but the middle of this book gets very just dry it goes into just some basic political stuff and there's a lot of jibber jabber in it because again remember this is them this is a heathen this is a gentile writing as if he is actually related to any of these things that they're talking about and i think we're going to talk about the tares and the virgins the foolish virgins are members of satan churches and the stories and the parables of the new testament that were told by yahweh shai 
So we'll get back to that later. Shalom, family. Shalom, everybody. Stay safe out there. Stay prayed up. Stay protected. Uh, stay happy. Stay healthy. And get into the knowledge. Don't be scared of what people think about you. Go out there and make a video on a historic event. Go make a video on something that happened a couple years ago. Go make a video on something that's breaking down something to somebody. Okay?